investment that you're thinking about buying or selling. That's a decision. Or maybe perhaps some of you are anticipating embarking on a home improvement uh, project, you know, to spend your money before inflation goes up and it's not worth anything. When making financial decisions, do you have a strategy that you utilize? Do you have a checklist that you work through? Or how about when you need to make a medical decision? You know, a few weeks ago, I shared with you how my friend Lisa Jolliff suddenly found these bruises on her legs. She went to the hospital. They diagnosed her sort of with leukemia, but they still don't know. Two weeks later, the Mayo Clinic, uh, which is, you know, where we typically turn to in, in Minnesota, they're still looking for answers. And so what do you do when you don't have answers regarding medical decisions? You know, do you just kind of stay in the hospital and wait? Or do you go home? Do you do nothing? Or do you maybe start your kind of taking drugs indiscriminately? Decisions. Life is colored every day by decisions. Well, so today we're going to unpack a few Bible verses found in Proverbs chapter 19, where we can read some advice from King Solomon, the king of Israel, offering us some input on how to make wise decisions. And so the first piece of advice that King Solomon offers us, for those of you taking notes, write this down, and that's this. When facing a decision, make sure you first do your homework. Do your homework. Look at Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. This is what we read. Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes what? Mistakes. You've heard that phrase before, haven't you? Haste makes mistakes. Look at verse 8. To acquire wisdom is to love oneself. People who cherish understanding will prosper. Look at verse 20. Get all the advice and instruction you can so you will be wise the rest of your life. Church, when you have a decision to make, is it your normality, if you will, to kind of seek out information or do you just wing it and hope for the best? You know, if right now, if you were to come into my garage, you would see a couple things. You would see Robin's vintage pickup that she got from her dad. You would see, and you would see a couple of motorcycles. Now, a few weeks ago, my motorcycle looked like this. I think we have a picture. That's what it used to look like. Now go to the other pictures. This is what it looks like now. Go to the next one. Next one. Look, that's what it looks like now. There's wires everywhere. Because a couple of weeks ago, as you know, I was on my motorcycle trip that I take every summer. And midway through my motorcycle trip, my heated grip stopped working. Now you say, Mike, why do you need heated grips in the summer? Well, comes because, you know, you, you, you roll into Missoula, Montana at night and it's 109 degrees. But then the next morning, it's 46 degrees. And heated grips are kind of like air conditioning during a heat wave like we're experiencing right now. It just makes life a lot more comfortable. Would you agree? How many of you are dreaming of air conditioning right now? Yeah. So I came home. I, I thought, you know, in an effort to kind of diagnose my, why my heated grips aren't working, I had to disassemble the entire front of my, of my motorcycle to access all of the wires, which you see or saw in the picture behind me. Now, full disclosure, when it comes to electricity, I just don't get it. For whatever reason, I can read stuff about electricity. I mean, I, can, I know how to wire, you know, walls and stuff like that. But when it comes to ohms and voltage and all of that, it just, it doesn't stick. And so uh, I'm over my head. How many times have I said to you, honey, this last week, I, I'm, I'm over, over my head. So consequently, this project's not going very uh, good for me. And so how does a person gain knowledge? YouTube videos. <laughs> YouTube videos is one of the tools that I've been re resourcing for sure. I uh, bought a, a service manual and I've been reading it to, to look at the intricacies of, of these wires and the YouTube videos is how do you test voltage and how do you do ohm resistance and what is continuity and how do you use a metrometer? That's not even the right term. I'm, I'm already, see, I'm already ex examining why I, I'm, I'm terrible at this. 
I've solicited the input of mechanical friends hoping that somehow I can identify the problem as to why my heated grips aren't working and fix it. And as you can tell by this long-winded illustration, it's not going very well. Well, you say, Pastor Mike, why don't, why don't you just take your bike to, to a professional and have them, you know, take care of it for you? And trust me, that's a question I've asked many times over the last two and a half weeks. But here's my point. Part of any decision-making process involves doing your homework to learn what you know and to learn what you don't know, right? Right? To learn what you're good at and to learn what you should ask people to, to tackle for you. And part of the decision-making process, which Solomon reminds us of here in chapter 19 of Proverbs, point number two in your notes, involves consulting God. You always want to consult God. So brothers and sisters, when you're facing a decision, how quick are you to consult God? You know, are you prone to invite God into your decision-making process early in the game? Or do you wait until things start to get a little sketchy? And suddenly the wires in your life are hanging out all over the place looking like spaghetti. No, I know you're feeling really bad about my motorcycle, aren't you? I can tell that by the faces. Good news, there's a, I reached out to my friend, my cousin Brian, this last uh, it was like midnight, and I said, are you up? Because he's typically up, and he said, I'm up. So he said, call, I said, I have a question about this. He said, call me. So the good news is his high-tech specialist mechanic is going to be here in town on Thursday. So I'm going to be riding my, Bryce, let's go for a ride this weekend, motorcycle riding, hopefully. Good news. Consult God. Proverbs 19, 11. let's get back on, 21, let's get back on track. Proverbs 19, verse 21. It says, you can make many plans but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Translation, invite God to guide you. When making decisions about life, whether it's motorcycle repair or medical or financial or what to do with your kids, invite God to guide you, consult God. Look at verse three. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness, we're told, and then are angry at the Lord. I invite you to do a little uh, self-reflection. You know, when you make a mistake, is it your tendency to blame others or do you take ownership for your own actions? You know, have you ever noticed how we tend to make excuses for our own mistakes? Excuses for our own errors or our own sins but we make accusations when someone else does something wrong. You know, I heard Pastor Greg Rochelle talk about this the other day. He said, when I do something wrong, and he was personalizing, he said, when I do something wrong, I will blame my circumstances. I will say, hey, I'm not that bad. It wasn't my fault. You know, stuff happens. But he says, when someone else does something bad, he says, we have a tendency to blame their character. We often don't give others the same amount of grace that we offer ourselves. Would you agree with that? Which might be one of the reasons why Jesus told us and called us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Now, is that easy to do? Yes or no? No way. Which is why we need God's help. King Solomon reminds us here in Proverbs chapter 19 that a fool should not blame the results of one's careless on the Lord. Now a fool will blame God. A, will, a fool will blame God instead of taking ownership. But Solomon here reminds us, brothers and sisters, that blaming others is foolish. And so when you make a mistake or when I make a mistake, don't blame God for our bad circumstances, particularly if we fail to consult him beforehand. It's not God's fault that my motorcycle is in disarray. It's not God's fault that you are in the predicament that you are. When making decisions, consult God. So now think back to that decision some of you are currently facing. 
Let's say a prayer and let's invite God into it, okay? So think of one decision. Could be a simple decision. Could be a major decision. But in your heart right now, just say, Heavenly Father, please guide me. Heavenly Father, please protect me. Good. Check out the promise of verse 23, Proverbs 19, verse 23, where we read, Fear of the Lord leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. When facing a decision, try to gather as much information as you can. Consult God by praying about your next step. And then point number three, get moving while staying flexible. Get moving while staying flexible flexible. Look at verse 15. Lazy people were told sleep soundly, but idleness leaves them hungry. Verse 24. Lazy people take food in their hand, but don't even lift it to their mouth. So here's how I interpret King Solomon's advice in these two verses. In fact, I want you to write this down somewhere um, if you're using the app, go to the bottom of the notes section, but write this down. Three words. Avoid sluggard inertia. Avoid sluggard inertia. You know, have you all experienced how much easier it is to steer a car once it's moving than rather when it's parked? So when you go home today or when you go out to your car today, and they'll just, just try that. Try to steer your, your steering wheel and then turn it on and get moving and find, see that the difference is. It's a whole lot easier to steer this car, just move the wheel when you're moving. And the same is true in life. Solomon advises here, he says that laziness will bog you down. I've talked about this in the past. Brothers and sisters, if you wait until you feel like reading your Bible. If you wait until you feel like praying. If you wait until you feel like exercising your mind, body, and soul. The devil's going to make darn sure that you don't ever feel like it. Avoid sluggard inertia. Lazy people avoid making a decision. And so they do nothing hoping that their circumstances will change. You know, for those of you who, conflict management, a lot of us respond to conflict very difficult, differently. Some of us, when we're in the, in the gauge of conflict, for those of you who uh, like to talk about it, right? You like to immediately, okay, let's, let's, let's get all the cards on the table and let's, let's flesh it out. Where others of us, or you, you don't want to talk about it at all, right? There's elephants in the room and you're bumping into them and you avoid them. And nothing ever really gets resolved. You know, our daughter currently lives with us because rent is so sky high. And this past week, she made the comment. She said, man, she said, it took me an hour and a half to get to and from, from, from work. She said, the freeway was crazy. She said, there are so many cars. And instantly, I just said, you know why there's so many cars on the freeway, don't you? And she goes, no, why? And I said, because it's so hot. Everybody wants to go to work because their workplace is air conditioned. Right? And they don't want to stay home. And, and if for particularly those that don't have AC, they don't want to suffer. Nobody really wants to stay home because of, of this heat wave that we're experiencing, which is why there's so many people on the freeway. You know, my opinion, this COVID pandemic has made people lazy. The last couple of years, this COVID pandemic has turned people into couch potatoes and people don't want to work. And the proof of that is, is what do you see in the windows of every restaurant you go to and grocery stores? What kind of signs? Help wanted signs. And the, this heat wave, I think, that we're experiencing has poked people's comfort level to the point that they would much rather go to work in a nice air-conditioned facility than to stay home and sweat. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't settle, keep growing. Don't settle, keep growing. Look at what the Bible writer counsels in verse 27. Verse 27, Proverbs 19, verse 27. He says, if you stop listening, 
Now, that doesn't apply to any of you because you're here, clearly. You're trying to learn and grow, so good, good on you. But he says, if you stop listening to instruction, my child, you will turn your back on knowledge. Now, think about this. I think what King Solomon is reminding us here in this Bible verse is that being wise is not a static state. You don't graduate to becoming wise and then, and, and then stay there. Why? Because life is a journey, right? Which requires this sort of this continual need to learn and adjust. You know, one of the purposes of a church, one of the reasons why we gather here at Palm Harvest is because we need each other to grow and adjust. Would you agree with that? I need you, brothers and sisters, and, and you need me. Why? Because we all have the capacity to do foolish stuff and make foolish decisions. Or am I the only one who has that capacity? No. We need each other. Friends, the Bible counsels us that when we're facing a decision, we should do our homework, we should consult God, and then we, we should move forward with our decision with, with, with action, all the while staying flexible. You know, this morning we were supposed to, I was going to interview somebody. And when he, when he called me this, this week, he said, Mike, I just had a, a death in the, a close friend of mine. I'm flying uh, to, to go to the funeral. He said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, what kind of, you know, mental and emotional state I will be in Sunday morning. I said, don't worry about it. I said, it's all in pencil anyways, right? We just got to, we'll, we'll adjust. And if you feel like you're, you know, grieving, I want for sure grieve. We'll get you in. Maybe next week we'll be, he'll be here with us. The point is stay flexible and keep moving. Adjust as needed. Avoid sluggard inertia. And then finally, point number four, and this is a hard one for people like me, keep your emotions in check. Keep your emotions in check. When making decisions, keep your emotions in check. Proverbs 19 verse 11, look what King Solomon tells us. He says, sensible people control their temper. They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. Now, I want you to notice what King Solomon doesn't say here in this Bible verse. King Solomon doesn't say that a wise person never feels angry, right? King Solomon doesn't say that a wise person, you know, doesn't ever blow a gasket or feel upset from time to time, does he? Rather, what's King Solomon teach? He seems to suggest that a wise, sensible person will control their temper and over wrongs. So over wrong, look wrong. So you, you will feel, it's, you will have a temper. It's just that you have the capacity or God has given you a capacity to, to, to stretch a little bit, which is another reason why we need each other. So when we're ready to say something or do something, we go to a friend and we go, you know what? I'm about ready to do this or say this. Talk me off the ledge. You know, brothers and sisters, I think one of the greatest weapons that the devil throws at us, and we've talked about this often here at Palm Harvest, is isolation. He loves it when we're alone. He loves it when we start thinking like that nobody really cares or, or you know, wants to walk with us. You're not alone. Turn to your neighbor and say you're not alone. We're here with you. Some of you are carrying a heavy load. You walked in this auditorium and, you're, and the, the weight is there. I want you to know you're not alone. Now it takes a, it's a risky to ask people to come into your life. Don't, don't give in to that, what the devil wants us to do. You know, you say, Pastor Mike, what does controlling my temper or overlooking people's insults have to do with making wise decisions? Here's my answer. See if you agree with this. I think the Bible writer wants you and me to be reminded of the truth that most decisions that we make, right, involve emotion. No matter how, how objective you or I might try to be when making a decision, emotion inevitably creeps in. Think about this. How does the emotion of love 
influence your decision making. You know, for you grandparents in the house, do your feelings for your grandkids influence how you spend your money? Yes or no? I'm looking over to this section here. No, big nods, right? Or how might fear influence your decision making? What you do or don't do? You know, does the fear of failure keep you from trying things? Does the fear of rejection hold you back maybe from investing in a relationship? Emotion is part of our decision making. You know, in recent weeks when we studied Proverbs chapters 14, 15, and 16, we were taught that patience is a mark of wisdom. And in Proverbs 19, verse 19, look at it. Solomon writes, he says, hot-tempered people must pay the penalty. Translation, unchecked emotions can cause carnage. An unfiltered tongue can foster irreparable damage. Any of you ever said something and as soon as the words were out of your mouth, you went, oops. Emotions are a real part, a natural part of, of life. And they will influence your decision making. Which is another reason why we need each other. Because I need your perspective. I need your support. You know, last couple, was it last week? We just had our elite team meeting. And so Kirk Bauermeister and, and, and Lisa Banning and Rick Kapko were part of that elite team. Rick and Lisa really manage the financial part of our church and they help make the decisions about financial decisions in our church. And Kirk's are the more of the spiritual part uh, on the team. He's part of our elders. And Rick Capco made a, you know, we were talking about something and, and he made, he made this, this comment. He said, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to tell you what to do. He said, I want to respect your role as a, as a pastor and lead pastor here at the church. But I want you to know, I, w I want you to know my input. And that's the kind of people I want in my life. I want people who will share their perspective with me. I need board members. This church needs people who will go, you know what? You may not agree with this, but have you thought about this? No, I haven't. Good point. Do you have people like that in your life? More importantly, are you listening to people like that in your life? I know, let me just close on this. Church, I'll confess to you that I am an emotional person. I know that I make decisions with my heart that are often in conflict with what my head is telling me to do. Anybody relate to that? King Solomon is reminding me here in Proverbs chapter 19, and, he is, and he's reminding you too, that when making decisions, do your homework, consult God, Get moving while staying flexible and with God's help and the, the help of the, those people in your circles of influence, keep your emotions in check. Because when we do this, if we practice this, God will guide us and help us make wise decisions. Yes. And this, my friends, is biblical wisdom to live by. Let's close in prayer. All right. Eyes closed, heads bowed. Anybody facing a decision right now, just raise your hand real quick and put it down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody feeling stuck and afraid to move forward, raise your hand real quick and move, put it down. Good. Thank you. Okay. Let me pray with you. Hands open. Deep breath. Inhale. Exhale, center down. As you inhale, just pray an arrow prayer. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me with your presence. And as you exhale, remove all my fears and worries and concerns. I'm turning it over to you. Lord, for those who raised their hand and those in there in, who didn't, who are facing decisions, whether they're here today or watching online, 
We trust you. And we pray, Father, that you would guide. No, I thank you that you are going to guide us in the decisions we are making. Lord, I thank you for the way you're going to guide these individuals who are facing a decision that they need to make to the right person to ask. Who should they talk to? Who should they not talk to? Who should they share their burden with and who should they not share their burden with? Lord, in the same way that you have placed around me men and women who are, who are honest enough to share with me their opinion, I pray that you would bring these individuals who have raised their hand, who are facing a decision, someone into their life this week, just to remind them. Maybe they don't get an answer. Maybe they don't even get any clarity. But just the fact that they're coming into their life is a simple reminder that you are walking with them. Finally, Lord, I pray that you increase our capacity to be wise counselors to others. We're here because we want to grow for ourselves and we're here because we want to grow for others. So Father, pour out your, your favor upon those here today and tuning in online. Expand their capacity to give good counsel in every arena in which they live. May the Spirit of the Holy God live in them this week. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.